Welcome to Night Shadows. I'm Stuart Best. Where the paranormal is normal. Where that which you thought you knew, you didn't. And where the future can be known, if you know exactly where to look. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and listening. And we've got Larry on his mountaintop with us tonight. And uh, a fair amount of news broke today. So we're going to do the news first before we get into uh, the time warp uh, stuff. With uh, I want to go over the uh, Bible codes that we did with uh, Barry on Wednesday night because my perspective, and I think Larry's perspective, would be a, a different than than his perspective because he does not accept Christianity and that's fine, uh, <clears throat> but that gives you a totally different viewpoint on what the Bible codes are actually saying when you compare it to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Book of Revelation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I want to get into that because it's very, very important to understand that some of the codes that Barry and Boy, his work is just wonderful. Um, I think are dire warnings that we are right on the edge of major, major change. Hi, Larry. How are you doing? Hey, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, where do we want to start? We've got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, let's start with this Russian thing. Uh, a warning? Now, this dovetails immediately into Isaiah chapter 17, folks, if you want to go look at it. The, the taking of Damascus by the cho- because of, it says, the children of Israel. I don't, I don't think you can necessarily read that it means the children of Israel do it. Anybody could do it. But it would imply that it's because of the children of Israel. I believe the United States of America, I don't know about you, Larry, but I believe the United States of America because it dovetails into, uh, we're the wild olive branch, into the olive branch of Israel. And therefore, we also would be probably in that category of the children of Israel. So if it is Israel that does it by a preemptive run or whether it's the United States that does it, I guess it doesn't really matter in the end. Damascus becomes a ruinous heap. What's your take on that? It seems odd that the, that Putin would be giving a, a, a warning about the taking of Damascus. Yeah, that's According very, to the time schedule inter- we're on. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting, sir, that uh, one of the reports came out yesterday in a couple of days of mainstream news even covering it, Yahoo and others, but Dale also posted it. It's the the headline is Russia warns U.S. plans to strike Damascus as pledges military response. And, you know if that does happen, and so the Russians are warning us that if we strike Damascus, which I find interesting, and and the wording very interesting in the article because it's not like if we strike Syria or Assad, it's strike Damascus is the terms. And at yes. the same time, sir, I'll mention this other one and get your comment, too, because this is breaking news today, actually, on uh, Breaking Israel News. I posted it while I go on my blog. Uh, there's a report that says, is a secret North Korean base in Syria producing chemical weapons and ballistic missiles near Kwadaha in Latakia province, close to the Russian Kiamenim Air Base uh, at Latakia? Takia, Syria. So there's a claim now. There is a report, and it's it's uh, somewhat isolated. It's not verified by other news reports yet, but there is a report coming out now of a North Korean secret base in Syria uh, being overshadowed and watched over by the Russian forces there at Latakia that is producing chemical weapons and um, um, ballistic missiles. And, and so this is another thing. Uh, not only is Damascus a, a zero target, but you know as well as I do that with Israel, they're going to really zero in on this target, and that's just going to cause more problems. And another thing I wanted to mention, Stuart, uh, they came out with a post uh, a little earlier on Fox News claiming that uh, they're now testing the U.K. chemical attack 
against the uh, professor there and his daughter and, and some other people that have fallen ill. They're testing it with uh, the chemical attack used against jo- uh, Kim Jong-un's brother, you know, where they mm-hmm. have brother that, that they assassinated, and I think it was Singapore, and they're testing it also with uh, chemical weapons that uh, North Korea was shipping in Syria. So, Stuart, are, are they really zeroing in now on maybe Iran and North Korea, tying it all in with maybe these chemical weapons and assassinations and, and dovetailing back into Putin? What do you think? I would think so. And, I, you know, you have to always go back to Psalm 2. The kings and the rulers of the earth all conspire together to dethrone Jesus Christ, God the Father, and the Holy Ghost. That's the ultimate goal. So what we're watching is part of the Psalm 2 war. Now we have China, North Korea, we have uh, Russia, we have Iran, Syria. Now if North Korea is in Syria, we know perfectly well that Iran has been getting tons of stuff from North Korea. In fact, that's basically how they finance what they do have is through shipping out weapons of war. So, in a way, it doesn't surprise me that North Korea would cozy up to a Russian air base because if we were to strike it, we'd be striking a Russian base, and that would be an act of war, and away we go. And I think what's happening is Putin, North Korea, China, Iran, uh, Turkey even is included in this, Syria is included in this, are playing a chess game, and they are maneuvering in such a way that if we do attack, it's going to be a direct attack on uh, Russia and Putin. And he's already threatened uh, some, I don't know if you remember it, but a couple of years ago, or maybe even last year, he gave a press conference and he scolded the press because he said, what are you guys, stupid? We are going into a world war and uh, there's no way around it. Basically, I'm paraphrasing him, but that's what he meant. That we are headed into a world war, and uh, it cannot basically be prevented. And um, some of his rhetoric after that would tend to confirm that that's basically true. And what is surprising to me, or not surprising to me, actually, I guess, is the timing of all this. At the pivot year, uh, if people would do a word study on three days, you're going to find some interesting stuff that details kind of uh, the resurrection, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, uh, do a word study on three days and then apply it to 2015 and 923, 2015, and uh, the delay by the sandstorm of 923 and how the Pope and Obama shook hands at Washington on 923, 2015 at 923 in the morning. Uh, This is all coded. This is all cryptic actions. It's kind of like parables in motion that the Lord gave us when he was here. And um, yeah, we're getting ready. And the timing, the pivot point then, if it's three years on the third day, A lot of stuff happens. The third day from 2015, the third year, would actually be 2018. And as Larry and I have said for for a while, 2017, 2018 pivot appears to be more than just a coincidence. Uh, But yeah, Larry, I think uh, I think. They're, they're colluding with each other, the kings of the earth are, and and makes you wonder. It looks like it's all, how do I say, well, this nation does this, so then we have to do that. And I'm not saying that the kings of the earth really understand what they're doing, or because if they actually did, they wouldn't do it. Because they don't want their own destruction either, and that's what's going to happen to them. And uh, so anyway, that would be my comment on that. What do you think? Well, what's interesting, too, uh, and we had discussed this earlier uh, together today, is Depth of the File is putting out a post that is very interesting. It, it's there today, actually. It says, Trump postpones his Israeli-Palestinian peace plan indefinitely 
with no formal announcement, says Trump briefed Middle East envoy Jason Greenblatt, uh, who apparently uh, briefed uh, Netanyahu. So we we had talked, uh, Stuart. We know what this, that this is a pivot year. We're in a pivot that you just, you know, you can't stop it. It's, it's going there. Yeah. And what so, we were wondering, Stuart, was the fact that is it possible that instead of having peace first, we have to have a war before the peace? Yeah, we've been kind of debating that back and forth. And sometimes you feel like, well, we've got to have a major war or they wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't take people up enough. Uh, the New World Order, and if you follow some of the religions, uh, uh, the weird religions, we could call them New Age, basically, have all said that uh, we have to have a major war, that out of the ruins of the Third World War will come the New World Order, and the people will capitulate. And if you remember Albert Pike and his Three World Wars, uh, the Third World War, is, it's happening exactly the way he said it would that it's a war between uh, basically Christianity, Judaism, and uh, Islam. That's what's happening. It's exactly what's happening. Albert Pike outlined the First World War. It went down exactly as he said. He outlined the Second World War. That happened exactly as he said it would. So now we're looking at the Third World War, and it appears to be shaping up exactly as he said it would. So... Yeah, if you have a war, then you can shake the people up. And this is really what this is all about. It's gaining control over the masses. And because of population reduction, that you'll find on the Georgia Guidestones and other places, if you read their writings, uh, eugenics, they want to reduce. And Deagle.com shows this massive, massive reduction in population of the United States and North Korea at the same time. Uh, somebody pointed that out to me, that it was North Korea also that shows a huge population reduction. So, yeah, I think we're right on the cusp. And I, I don't know who Trump is. I, uh, I know he's there because the Lord placed him there, and he's going to do what the Lord told him. And if he doesn't, he's going to be <laughs> removed. Actually, Donald is in, in between a rock and a hard place because if he doesn't do what Satan wants, and the uh, Illuminati want, uh, then they're going to go get him. But if he does what God wants, or if he doesn't do what God wants, God's going to go get him. So this is very, very interesting. All this is going to play out. Anyway, that's my take on it. What do you <laughs> well, think? another thing, sir, I, I just wanted to add a note here. You know, I talked to you earlier and told you that Joel C. Rosenberg had just put a uh, – political military thriller out called the kremlin conspiracy and i was reading that and it is absolutely incredible the way joel rosenberg is laying out everything from the focus of the, the kremlin into everything including our election and including uh where all of this seems to be going and i hadn't finished the book yet i posted the image of the book today on uh my blog and people can go mm -hmm. there and look at it and they can order it from Amazon or Joel, either one. But uh, I think we're getting pointers, uh, you know, from books and movies as, as time goes by about all of this. Yes. Uh, I notice here we got uh, Saudi Prince Salman uh, has said, if Iran gets the bomb, we're going to make, we're going to get the bomb. Uh, Iran already has the bomb. I read about 10 years ago, where Iran had tested a nuclear bomb. But I can't find it anywhere, but I know I saw it. Oh, Do you remember true. anything yeah. like that? Oh, absolutely. I remember the articles. I've heard uh, some of the experts talk about it. But that was scrubbed from the news. That was removed. And uh, I think Steve Quayle actually had a captured image of that uh, article, an original. And he kept it, but not, not many people kept it. And so... When it was scrubbed from the Internet, you can't find it anymore. Um, you know, the interesting thing is there was also reports about a year or two ago, remember, Stuart, that Saudi Arabia had obtained two nuclear weapons from Pakistan already. Yes. Yes, now that you mention it, I do remember that. So I, I think this is all, well, the news you're getting, folks out there, 
even on alternative news now the uh, the Illuminati has penetrated alternative news so you have to be very very careful uh, when you get your news how to vet it and whatnot and of course you know it's, it's difficult the only book you have that really is telling you what's happening is the Holy Scriptures and unfortunately most people aren't reading that either so they don't have much of uh, the you know, and you've got all these so-called prophetic experts that are misidentifying who the players are. Uh, very few will admit that America, for example, Babylon the Great, or that New York City is the great city Babylon. Oh, no, no, you're crazy. It's Rome, or it's uh, Israel and Jerusalem, and on and on and on they go, none of which fit the parameters that God gave us. There's over 140 of them. By the way, uh, you can go to our... YouTube channel, Angel Fall 923, and you will find Why America's Babylon. It's a two-hour video documentary I did a long time ago. It's free. You can go over there and click it and, and deny it if you want to, or try to disprove it would be better. Because if you try to disprove it, you'll really educate yourself as to who America really is. And if you don't understand who the players are, then you can't really understand what's happening or why it's happening. Um, another headline here, Secret Empire, that you were talking about. Is that a new book, by the way? Uh, that's a new book, Stuart. It's just coming out. Uh, Breitbart is uh, covering There's some reports on that. And uh, mm -hmm. the most interesting thing, let me read you two headlines. Both of them are from Breitbart. Number yep. one headline, Secret Empires. China used business deals to influence families of Mitch McConnell and Joe Biden. And there's a follow-up article called, uh, from the New York Post, Breitbart Posted, said Explosive Secret Empires book uncovers Joe Biden, John Kerry, and others in a billion-dollar China bombshell. So this is just new coming out. It's new stuff. Well, the Lord did promise he was going to reveal all this stuff, didn't he? He didn't say how. He just <laughs> said it would all be revealed. So I guess that's kind of happening right now. Um, yeah. You covered the North Korean base. Uh, what's this North Korean meeting in Geneva business? Well, I found a little bit more out on that, Stuart, since we talked last. Uh, this is uh, reports are dropping in on uh, Fox a little bit business. And also, uh, One American News is posting the report. It seems that the uh, that a delegation from North Korea has arrived in Sweden uh, for special uh, pre-talks between the U.S. and North Korea. In other words, the, they're having talks in Sweden right now to set up a meeting, I, I suppose, um, you know, between the U.S. government and the uh, North Korean government. So that that means that something is in motion. Well, of course, Trump did say he'd like to meet. He even said that uh, when he was campaigning for president, that he would have no problems meeting with Kim. So we might see something that's very strange, that we go into some sort of a peace between the two. And uh, to me, it would be a trap no matter what no matter which way it goes, but I guess that's just my conspiratorial mind. <laughs> I don't trust <laughs> Kimmy Boy at all. I think he's much smarter than people give him credit for. And I think we're way underestimating Putin as well. Well, uh, I believe you know, Stuart, you, yeah, you said that. Uh, let me interject this real quick, because in the last two days, they are now announcing that they're finding out that China apparently wasn't the one supplying a lot of the uh, uh, missile and nuclear technology to uh, Kim. Actually, mm -hmm. it wound up being Putin out of Russia. That uh, and, and that's something else I wanted to mention, Stuart, and get your opinion. Yes. That the new book by Gerald Rosenberg, The Kremlin Conspiracy, in that yes. book, and you know he has a lot of sources, especially the Middle East sources, he claims that actually North Korea and Iran are proxy war fronts of Putin. Well, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Uh, Putin is being wholly underestimated. 
as to his smarts, number one. He's, a, he's the world's greatest military chess player that we've seen in a long, long time. He outmaneuvered Obama I don't know how many times. You probably remember those headlines. And uh, Putin plays chess, and I think you're the one who said uh, Trump plays cards. Well, there's a big difference between yeah. playing cards and playing chess. And according to Bible prophecy, we get checkmated. And I don't know if Putin is the one that's the head of the Soviets at that time. And I use the term Soviets because if you remember Glasnost and Perestroika, they admitted that the so-called breakup of the Soviet Union was a ploy, a basic ploy to throw the West off guard. And it's worked very, very well. And, of course, because our American leaders don't really read the Bible or study it, they don't know who they are, and they don't really know who Russia is. So this this is going to get real interesting. Do you think we'll have a head-on collision over there in Iran or Syria? It seems like they're setting this thing up, so we have no choice but to strike, and as soon as we do, we're at war with the Soviets. Well, it's even getting more serious, Stuart. For the, in the last uh, 24 hours, there's been reports now that uh, Iranian and Syrian and Hezbollah forces have massed troops in, um, I guess you'd call it western, uh, I believe it's western uh, Syria, there by the border with Iraq, against our forces that are with the Kurds. And so... They're very troubled that uh, there's going to be a provocation, a military provocation. You remember the uh, Russian mercenaries tried to attack our forces, and we slaughtered about 300 of them. And Putin's really uptight about that. Well, there appears to be another confrontation or an attack coming is the latest I'm getting, and that's in the last hour or so. That's came in on the Internet, sources out of the Middle East. But at the same time, uh, you know, we've got the situation in Syria with uh, Soleiman, the leader of the Iranian forces there, and they are moving closer and closer to the northern border of uh, Israel. So that this, and, and at the same time, Stuart, I just wanted to inject real quick that the, yep. we've got thousands of troops in Israel right now, and we have deployed U.S. missile batteries all over Israel. Uh, Israel is under a missile shield at the moment, and a lot of people are not even aware of that fact. So we apparently are expecting some kind of attack very soon well what i don't understand is if if hamas or hezbollah any one of those groups decides they're going to launch ten thousand missiles at israel they don't have any defense they're going to get pulverized they could use the samson option i suppose which they have often said they might do uh you know if we're going to go down we're going to take the world with us and I think that that kind of a thing has. And, of course, Russia's got this doomsday weapon that they rely on, too. I don't know what we have, but, uh, you know, the world is headed for yeah, extinction anyway, basically. Bible says in Isaiah chapter 24 that there are only few people left. They're as rare as fine gold, which is very, very rare to uh, just dig it up naturally where it's 99.99% pure. And uh, so that should give people a clue. And we are heading in. I mean, look at what's going on in the weather and earth changes, the sun, um, the radiation levels coming from the deep space outside of the solar system. It's all coming uh, higher and higher. So, yeah. Um and at the same time, Stuart, we're getting the really strange anomalies here, like like uh, green skies and uh, and the nanoparticles or whatever that was today. Yeah, you put uh, you you have a picture, and I I got it, uh, <clears throat> where the sky is green, and immediately it reminded me of noise that near to well erstwhile Indian shaman woman, who appears to be almost. Uh, 100% correct in her analysis of what's coming. She mentions green skies. 
It's part of uh, Phoenix rising. Uh, it's a green sky. So it's, in a, in a way, it was surprising. But probably what is happening is it'll show up here, then it'll show up there, then it'll show up elsewhere, and eventually, I think, probably planet-wide. And you know how the uh, aurora borealis is green most of the time. It can be red. It can be any color. But usually it's greenish. And you remember how uh, Cliff High with the uh, uh, CME impacts? Not Cliff High, but Dr. Doom at Dames and a kill shot. Well, that's radiation. And it made me wonder if the skies go green because of electromagnetics that cause it to happen. What do you think? I mean, you, you, the picture you took is beautiful. I mean, it really is. But it also yeah, reminds and, and me of what, how deadly it could be. <clears throat> yeah, that's what's so strange. We had a lot of chemtrail activity the, mor- the morning I took that picture. And I sent you a copy, and I posted it, and then I got an uh, email from a guy in Muskogee, Oklahoma, which is a little way from me, and mm-hmm. uh, he said he saw a green sky. So, you know, this is really strange. Wow. Well, tell me about these nanoparticles that were evidently alive that you found in the water. That is spooky well, they were- stuff. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of chemtrails, and, you know, I've told you about that. Well, we had a lot of chemtrail activity Thursday and Thursday evening late. And then Friday morning, which was this morning, we had a rain. And when I went outside, there's all kind of, you know, and my wife went out there with me and looked at it, black stuff uh, in the water. I mean, and it was moving around. I got down real close and looked. I thought maybe there were small bugs, but they wasn't bugs. They were spots of something that were all moving around it like it was alive. And then a little later, I, I took the pictures I showed you. Yep. The water yep. had, uh, the, yeah, all of this stuff had assembled itself. In other words, it was scattered over like uh, 10 feet uh, of my walkway outside, and then it all come together. I don't know how it did that, but all of it come together and collaborated in, a, in two different huge, what I call gobs of goo or whatever it was. And then later on, uh, Stuart, I went out there after I'd sent those images to you, and, and it was literally gone. I don't know what happened, but it's very, very strange. Wow. Well, of course, we have no idea. You know, we have the Georgia Guidestones. We have the writings of the elite that they want a huge population reduction. They want <clears throat> basically left folks, if you don't know that, they want to kill off about 6.5 billion people because what Georgia Guidestone said there's only 500 million people on earth the entire planet at the at the time of uh, this so-called extinction level event uh, engineered by the Illuminati you got to understand that the rich men of the earth have a very deep hatred for humanity and uh, the Bible really tells us that they're insane But whether they're insane or not insane doesn't really matter. They've got the money to do what they want to do. And that's the problem because humanity doesn't rise up and stop them. And so a lot of this is going to come down. Uh, One more headline here. You've got um, the uh, attack on the power grids claiming Russia has has attempted to attack our power grids. Am I reading that right? Yeah, you're reading that right, Stuart. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, that's come out in the last couple of days. Um, you know, they are reporting that they have now uh, found that, uh, well, uh, here's the headline on Drudge this morning. USA mm-hmm. blames Russia for cyber attacks on the U.S. power grid. So now we're claiming that they did attack our power grids. Wow. Well, of course, they can claim that. We already know the CIA can do about anything it wants and blame anybody they want. <clears throat> and uh, so you don't really know what the truth is. I only know what the Bible tells us about the leaders of Babylon the Great, that we conspire and we deceive and we lie and we go in.
into uh, countries and we overthrow legitimate governments and uh, we sow uh, discord and all kinds of stuff. And uh, the Lord is looking down at all this and finally just says, I've had enough. And the United States of America, a.k.a. Babylon the Great, is basically annihilated from coast to coast. And, you know, what's sad about this is that the American people could rise up and put a stop to all this. But even with Trump fighting as hard as he has, have the American people actually risen up and helped him? Have you noticed that? I haven't. No, not even by word, especially not by deed, but not even by word. And, Stuart, to back up what you just said, the CIA... What we're seeing in Washington, D.C. playing out since the election of Trump is how the CIA, it's a playbook for taking down uh, kings and and, and, uh, presidents and rulers of other countries. That is the playbook we're seeing in Washington for the last year. Yeah, and the Bible says, do you think, after it, it tells us about how we do this, it says, do you think that the nations you've done this to aren't going to repay you? And, of course, at the end, they do repay us with a huge nuclear attack. And Babylon the Great goes down in one hour's time. And it says you should have considered your latter end. But it also says that the rulers think nobody's watching them and they can get away with anything they want. Well, of course, uh, we have often said, there is something called the God factor, which an awful lot of people reject. There is a God, you know, so they think they're in good company, that nobody can see them. They can go into their back rooms and conspire and do their things. But there is somebody that's watching all this. Yeah, so Stephen he who Hawkins, made the uh, ear. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to mention Stephen Hawkins. There's a new, uh, you know, he just passed away and, there's a new Barry Rothman Torah code on Stephen Hawking. Yeah, go with it. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Barry Rothman just did it uh, March the 15th. It says Stephen Hawking, creation and anger over logic. And uh, it's got uh, eight phrases, and, and it, uh, it starts out number one, Hawking. And I'm just going to read the phrases without giving you a, count, a number count. It says Hawking. Okay. And then in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was unformed and was void. And so really the the situation, you know, Stephen Hawking for a number of years was against creation, or the creation theory, if you will, and uh, this Torah code basically slapped him in the face. Yeah. Uh, towards the end, he did make a comment. I don't. I didn't go look it up, but I remember reading it where he said the universe is so intricately put together and so finely tuned that there had to be a creator. But I don't think he went anything beyond that. Uh, But he knows now. There's no question about that. He knows now. Because uh, you cross over. Uh, But I want to, before we get into uh, Barry's stuff, major development. Knesset panel passes Jewish state bill. Now, folks, this, if it passes, is one of the most important happenings in Israel in a long time. Now, remember that uh, they're going to move the embassy there to Jerusalem. Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Remember that the Sanhedrin has been formed. And they have collected most of the stuff they need for the temple. And uh, Israel is uh, getting ready. A bill officially defining, I'm going to read the article because it's really a good short article. A bill officially defining the nation of Israel as a Jewish state, something that has eluded Knesset lawmakers since the country's inception has just passed a key Knesset committee and now goes on to the full Knesset chamber this week for the first of three votes. The significance of its potential passage cannot be understated. 
the Jewish state bill would actually become Israel's basic law, akin to an amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and far more powerful than typical laws that can easily be overridden by the courts. Not only would it officially declare the state of Israel to be the one and only homeland of the Jewish people, but it would also make Hebrew the official language of the country and would include key prophetic language from Deuteronomy 30, 1 through 5, about how Israel must now ingather the remaining exiles spread abroad. Go into Ezekiel. And you'll read about that. Thirty, uh, what is it, Larry? Thirty-seven, I think. Thirty-six, thirty-seven that's about right. the ingathering. Wow, the law sure, is a, that's yeah, incredible. And, and, and it is. And when did the that law happen? is a right major. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to mention, Stuart. The interesting thing is, when did this happen? Uh, it it's during the pivot. Yes, all this is happening on the third day, third year. Yep. Uh, this is this really means something. The final paragraph, the law is a major prophetic turning point, and in my humble opinion, a prophetic signal that the fig tree is now ready for inspection, and the times of the Gentiles is near to their end. If it passes, I have no hesitation in concluding that 2018 is prophetically significant as 1948-1967 the Jewish people will finally have recognized and declared who they are, where they belong, and what a major part of their purpose is, but they will still be missing the one key element, the recognition of their Messiah. And it will take nothing less than a seven-year tribulation for them to finally acknowledge who he is and to accept his atoning sacrifices for their sins. And of course, we do know that there are rabbis over there where uh, the Lord Jesus Christ has actually visited him. And there was one rabbi who was, uh, he said he knew who Messiah was. You remember that? But he had a letter and he kept it secret until after he died. Yeah, and they opened it and uh, he said that it was Yeshua. <laughs> yes, it was Jesus. Uh, Jesus is well hidden, and to the uh, to most uh, Orthodox Jews, they just simply cannot accept it. And uh, Paul just says they are blinded, and there's a reason why the the Creator has blinded Israel, and that is to bring in Gentiles, wild olive branches, and and bring them in and uh, attach them to the uh, olive tree. And that's why Paul says, do not boast yourself against Israel and the Orthodox Jews. If it wasn't for them, there wouldn't be any uh, Messiah for, for the Gentiles. Anyway, 1967, it says Israel takes eastern Jerusalem and the Temple Mount. 2018, Israel becomes a Jewish state, declares Hebrew the official language, and defines its prophetic purposes. I would also mention that the bill as written does not mention democracy, and this is intentional as its authors want to restrain the courts and require to give them deference to Jewish law. It also allows Jewish-only communities to be established in the country. Now, this has to tie directly into the temple, the movement of the embassy, and uh, here we are. What do you think? Wow. Wow, I think it's incredible timing. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. And uh, I I would have to say we as a nation in America are in deep, deep doo-doo. And uh, I don't know (laughs) what else you can say. (laughs) Well, Stuart, that may may be why we're not getting a lot of... uh, Torah code readings out of uh, Israel with the masters because, uh, you know, they kind of shut down 5778 or 2018 as we know it uh, for the Torah code being released. Yeah, I know that because um, what's his name? Glazerson. And who's the other one? 
Well, there's glaciers and there's harelicks, there's rips. Uh, there's about four or five or six of them that Richard knows real well, and they were really pouring stuff out for 5777, but uh, 5778, they all got extremely quiet. Yeah, and we, we often have wondered why, and it's got to be that they have found something they do not want to re- be released, or the Israeli government shut them down because of what they have found. And I believe that uh, Barry has found the same thing, basically. He's interpreting it different than I would. I want to get into some of that before we run out of the hour. Uh, It's it's just too bad that uh, we are in a biblically basic illiterate uh, in, in America. They just don't seem to understand what's going on at all. And you can't tell them because they don't want to know. Uh, anyway, uh, you said Barry uh, had released another one uh, after uh, Hawking's. On, uh, he on, released um, another one involving involving tachyons, but we'll have to get into that next time. Uh, I don't have it copied down in front of me, so he was working on it. Okay, <clears throat> I want to get into Barry's code, so. And I, I have to say publicly, the guy is doing just a marvelous work. And it's just a, simply a matter of interpreting from one faith to another faith. And uh, I want to get to this one. Uh, Barry Storer quotes, unlocking keys to the material universe construction, how time works, basically. The words he is finding all relate to either warnings of soon-to-come events. Uh, The first one, back to the future in the Torah, an examination of whether future events were encoded in Torah and look at possible physical explanations. And the key words here were time machine, tachyon, boson, in the end of days, and Nor was 600 years old, and the flood was. Now, this is how I would interpret that. Uh, You look up what a tachyon is, in case people don't understand what it is. It's a theoretical particle that travels faster than light and moves backward, therefore, in time. Now, it's a theoretical thing. And so they think it probably exists, but they don't really know for sure. But here's what I was thinking about. And I want your comments, Larry, as we go through this, and we can pick it up on another show. Time, anti-time, matter, anti-matter, dark matter, dark energy. Remember Glazeson, was it Glazeson or Eli Rip? And they got very excited because they found primal light. Do you remember that? Well, I do because they wrote an entire article on it, and I sent you a copy of it. We talked about it on one show, and it involved uh, uh, the original light, if you will. And it was yes. actually all three of them. It was uh, Herlick and Rips and Glazerson involved in that. Yeah, that's kind of interesting because now they're talking about dark matter, dark, and dark energy, and I've often wondered, well, maybe that's not actually dark matter. That's just the way we're looking at it. That may be the light of of, of uh, the primal light, the primal light in the spirit of love. Uh, yeah, I have to. I'd have to briefly go into what happened to me when I was a little kid. I was about six years old. I was walking up. Uh, I lived on a high mountain up in Vermont, and I was walking up the road to my house on top of the mountain. And I believe it was in the spring. The sun was out. It was really a beautiful day. And a voice came to me, and it said, the Bible, the book you're holding, actually, which I was holding the Bible, is the most important book in the entire world. Well, like everybody else, I just stuck it on a shelf where it collected dust. But uh, the Lord called me much later, and I'm not a religious person. I never was a religious person. And I have no idea even today why he called me. But he called me into a, uh, a situation where I literally met the creator 
of the entire universe. And he spoke to me, called me by name. You can go into John chapter 10 where it tells about that. And uh, he showed me or revealed to me uh, love. And I'm not talking about human love. I'm talking about a love so profound, so deep, uh, and all I really wanted to know was the truth. And that's all I wanted to know. I didn't care if it was Buddha that I was going to run into or who I was going to run into or if I ran into anybody. But I knew that basically there has to be one truth behind all existence, and that's what I wanted to know. And so I set out to search with all my heart, mind, strength, and I quit everything, and I did it. And lo and behold, I ran into the truth, and it was very, very fascinating revelation because it was like I was in a theater, and the curtains rolled back, and I was looking into the love of God, and it is so far beyond anything we can comprehend, the depth of it, the breadth of it the width of it, whatever you want to call it, it obliterates everything that we consider. It obliterates sin. It obliterates nations. It obliterates basically the universe. And so I'm looking into this, and I'm, you know, you're all struck. And it really are no words that you can use to even describe it. And then he called me by name. He said, Stuart, do you agree that love runs this universe well after looking at that that's obvious so i said yes sir (laughs) you know being in the military you say yes sir so that's what i said yes sir (laughs) and then he says Stuart, have you ever loved and after looking at his love and comparing it to my so-called love that was also very very obvious i said no sir and then he's just and the voice is so gentle And then he said, will you? And I struggled, and I finally said, yes, sir. And my whole life has changed since then. And now I know what this is all about. And it it sounds like you're bragging, but it wasn't anything I did. It was something that he revealed to me. And love really does run this universe. And every human being knows in their own fallen love, that love really is the best, it far outweighs, let's put it this way, far outweighs hatred and evil. And that's what's being unleashed right now is hatred and evil. And one of the reasons is the defection from the truths of the Bible. So humanity has decided to go on its own. Well, humanity has fallen. Humanity just loves to fight and war, rape and kill, and pillage, and yet people people will sit there and say, well, there's nothing wrong with us. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I'm afraid there is something wrong. And uh, anyway, into that kind of lecture, I'll get into it later. But here is my interpretation of it. Uh, the Higgs boson that he talks about in that one place, the God particle, CERN, end of days, just at the end, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be, a warning that we must be at the end before the judgments of Revelation begin to fall. What is CERN? I think it's a sign that we are at the end of days. What do you think? That's how I would interpret it, and that's why the days of Noah are in there. And the flood is in there. In other words, we're at the precipice of a major catastrophic change. What do you think? Yeah, I I think you're right on, Stuart, on that. And and if you look at his Torah codes uh, involving time, um, you know, it it, it talks about, you know, the bosun and CERN and disaster and all of this stuff. And I wanted to just share something real quick here. Yeah, Uh, There's a new Yahoo post post that just came out, and I know this will interest you, it says mysterious gamma ray signal is coming from an ancient stars in the center of our galaxy. said uh, the signal comes from the center of the galaxy from the past 
not from dark matter. Now, that from the past, isn't that interesting? That is with what Barry has found. Uh, and it's amazing to me that Barry is, is being key, a key person in unlocking all of this at the time he's unlocking it. Now, folks, if you want to know, when you look up to the heavens, you're not seeing the present. You're seeing the past, uh, depending on how far away the star is. Light travels at a basically 186,000 miles a second. It takes eight minutes for the light from the sun to get here. So when you see the sun, you're not actually seeing it. You're seeing it eight minutes uh, late. <laughs> and uh, this is something people don't realize. And With that article you just wrote or, or told me about, they have taken pictures. This gets into Dr. Paul LaViolette and time warps and um, this sort of thing, uh, cosmic waves, uh, cosmic radiation waves, uh, gravity waves. And I think this is what Barry has run into. Signal from the future, Joseph, Sapphire, then he goes into the book in the library that he was at. Uh, to him, that would be a very personal thing, I'm a, I think, for, for Barry. But this is how I would interpret that. Joseph re refers back to Egypt and the 14 years. Remember the 14 years of Joseph? Seven fat oh, years yeah. when he was head of Egypt? Seven fat years and then seven lean years, famine and judgment fell upon Egypt in that way. But now Egypt is classified basically as the United States and the world at large. And the removal of the yoke of bondage from the Lord's people took place, the exodus, their removal, their rapture, the vanishing, the translation. Joseph was a type of Jesus Christ, actually. Uh, Ron Reese has written a lot about that, and I agree 100% with him. And here's what's interesting. Just as most Orthodox Jewish people will not recognize Christ, Joseph's brothers did not recognize him. Remember that? And he had to <laughs> reveal himself to them. Yeah. Okay, the sapphire is a stone in the breastplate of the high priest. Who's the high priest? Well, to the Christian, it's Jesus Christ. This code sequence is a warning, I believe, firmly, of a fast approaching seven years of famine in Daniel's lost week, which we call simply the tribulation period, and that Jesus Christ is coming back to judge Israel for their rejection of the Messiah. And, of course, they get a second chance, uh, if, you, if you really read what it says. Okay, then his other one. What do you got for a comment on that one before we get to the next one? Anything? Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah, okay. go ahead. I know we don't have a lot of time, but you're on a roll. Okay, this one. Uh, next one that he did. And I, I just love Barry for doing this. He's really, he's really rocking and rolling with this. Can God prove he is the author by reversing time to bring the resurrection? Okay, return the shadow. Now, we know what that means because that happened way, way back, remember, when the Lord turned uh, the sun back 10 degrees so that they could win the war. Okay, Hezekiah, Isaiah, but then it says the number of years, like the days, backwards, resurrection, quantum, and gravity. And Barry interprets that, I think, as quantum gravity. I'm not so sure that's what it is, but it could well be. Okay, return to shadow means another wobble. Going to Isaiah chapter 24, where the earth wobbles, and then it flips. And, uh, okay, number of years reminds me of Psalm 90. Teach us to number our days, he's saying to Israel. When, you, when will you return, O oh Lord? Now, this is one where I get accused of reading the Bible backwards, and it's absolute, I get accused of everything, so it doesn't bother me, but they're nuts. But if you read 13, then 12, then 11, uh, you, you come to, and then uh, 10, 
you find out exactly what's happening. Verse 13, return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent thee concerning thy servants. Verse 12, teach us to number our days. First they say, well, well when are you going to return? So the next verse, teach us to number our days, that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. That's a direct reference to the wrath of God in Revelation. Okay, verse 10. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, seventy, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, eighty, yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Now that absolutely happened exactly on the days that were recorded in the Bible. I don't want to get into it because I don't have time, but I will later. For it is soon cut off, we fly away. I happen to believe that soon is exactly 21 years. Seven, seven, seven. 2018. Something is coming for Israel that they don't want to look at. Uh, and that is severe trouble. Anyway, <clears throat> in other words, this is how I interpret it. Barry may be absolutely right. I'm totally wrong. doesn't matter. Look backwards to know the future. Look backwards to the establishment of Israel and its foundations for the third and final commonwealth, which we're watching form right now with the uh, embassy move, uh, the Sanhedrin, the, the new temple coming up, resurrection. Israel is tied directly to the end of days and the resurrection. Israel's our time clock. But you have to look backwards to find out when it's going to be. How? Perhaps via quantum physics and quantum gravity, cosmic waves, gravity waves emanating from the Milky Way core, tying it exactly back to the article you wrote or read. As Dr. Leviolette has said in his book, Earth Under Fire, one of the most important books you could ever lay your hands on, one of the most important books to actually begin to understand what's actually happening. The resurrection of the dead will be what is called an instantaneous time wave, one of a series that may well use cosmic energy waves to distort time and space or remove or vanish certain people. As the bots have said, Cliff High, a vanishing is coming, a cosmic energy wave of spiritual fire called the translation of the saints in the twinkling of an eye, an instantaneous and violent removal. What do you think? Yeah, that's very interesting because Augusto Perez also had an experience, a supernatural experience, where he was shown a certain people vanishing, just like you just described. And so uh, all of this seems to come together, and here we are, 2018, 5778, actually. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Israel already in that on their calendar, and... Uh, this is a pivot point for humanity, it seems. Yeah, I think so. And I think all the signs that are here, we just don't want to believe it. People are too comfortable with their lives, and they don't want to believe any of this. So I think there's a certain amount of denial. And uh, I'm going to do a couple more shows with this, um, describing how all of this really works and what the Lord has shown me and uh, what he told me about all this. Anyway, Larry, thanks for coming on, and uh, thank everybody here for listening. Any final comment? We have about 40 seconds. Oh, just uh, people keep your seat belts buckled because <laughs> we're on the ride right now, especially uh, with uh, North Korea and Russia and Iran and, and all the movements that we're seeing in the Middle East. So just uh, hang in there, folks, and, and keep that belt buckled. Yeah. And that is definite. And, folks, if you haven't gone to the bank, got a little cash, you're going to need to. Uh, get some food stashed away, even if it's just canned goods and rice. doesn't cost a lot of money. You can, you can, uh, you can do it. You're going to need it. Anyway, thanks, everybody, for listening. And uh, we'll see you next week, the Lord willing. And if any emergencies come up, we'll definitely, Larry and I will do an emergency update. Anyway, good night, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next week.